Just as the crickets are starting to wind down a night's work, Junior Johnson's day is cranking up. About anything you eat off my hog, we got it right here. The NASCAR Hall of Famer is getting into gear early this morning at the controls of a stove, preparing a feast at his Yadkin County farm. It's not the everyday run of food. We try to pick and find and get the best stuff. That includes biscuits, eggs, and hash browns, even salmon patties. But don't expect waffles and pancakes. It's basically a meat breakfast, not a sweet breakfast. The champion NASCAR driver, crew chief, and team owners directing a major extravaganza with pots and pans instead of wheels and wrenches. It's a spread that serves dozens, and Junior dishes it up every day. We don't cook on Saturday and Sunday. Okay, well, every weekday anyway. Nonetheless, it's a lot of food to fry up, so some of Junior's friends come to lend a hand. Jim Floyd's never here any later than 5.30. My wife said, why do you get up that early in the morning to come up here? I said, because I like it. I do, I enjoy it. And so do a lot of other folks. There's a crowd of regulars that numbers about a dozen. It's grown into a pretty big thing. I mean, Junior used to do all the cooking, and now then there's two or three or four of us. Junior started this for his farm hands to get them here and get them eating and getting them starting to work on a regular time. Which is 7 a.m. sharp. That's when the green flag drops on the feast and the plates start passing, even a sweet one. As the silverware gets to work, so do decades of stories. Yeah, this whatever you want to talk about. You settle all the world problems right here and start some new ones if you want to. But at the table of a NASCAR legend, the conversation invariably revolves around racing much of the time and Junior's early days running moonshine. On the road and hauling it, I never did get caught. It was the skills he learned running shine that helped launch Junior Johnson's racing career. Junior Johnson roars down the pit road. At he won 182 races as a driver and car owner, and he had plenty of lighthearted moments along the way and pranks on his crew members, in this case, a guy named Herb. He's as greasy as he can be, you know. He never did wash his hands. So Junior and a friend made some special sandwiches. And he got two cans of dog food. <laughs> We make that up. Come in our, he grabbed that thing and made him two big sandwiches of dog food. No, he loved it. And we made we went back to the corned beef and stuff. Next day he come in there and he says, What'd you get this old stuff for? Yesterday I had a whole lot butter sandwich we got today. <laughs> Even in the midst of old stories, a few thoughts of the NASCAR of today are bound to come up. Right now, I think the car is the biggest thing that I don't like. It, it's, a, you know, everybody has the same kind of car and it's a kind of cookie cake type deal. I'd like to see everybody do their own cars. Junior's known most of the folks here for decades. We had grown up together. But you don't need to be a childhood friend or even a more recent acquaintance to get a seat at Junior Johnson's table. And I've never seen him turn anybody away, never. On any given day, a group of first timers could stream in the door. Word about Junior's breakfasts has spread across the country. We've had people from all out in California and Seattle, Washington. You meet people from all over the United States. Some of them fellow NASCAR drivers themselves. You don't never know who will show up. I mean, you might have, well, like Ryan Newman and Bobby Allison. They come in here a couple of times. But the majority of the newcomers are racing fans, relishing a chance to have breakfast with a NASCAR legend. I've seen them come in six, eight people and unannounced. He makes everybody welcome. He did. Doesn't bother him, come right on in. But it can make life a little stressful for the cooks when big groups like that show up. If you catch it before you put it on the table, you can always add to it while you're cooking. But if it hits the table and everything's done, and then they show up, that's, that's what's rough. But Junior and his friends have a strategy for those situations. A lot of times the people that, that normally eat, you know, like the regulars, They'll either go to the restaurant somewhere to make sure somebody that comes in here has never been here before eats. Andy West is a regular at Junior's table now, but he was once a nervous newcomer himself. I finally got up nerve to come up here and walked in the door, spoke to a couple sitting there, and Junior sitting on the end. He got up and he said, uh, what do you want in your coffee? 
I knew right then I had it made. Even after the tables cleared and the foods all put away, the good times don't end at Junior Johnson's place. There's still his shop filled with plenty of Junior's equipment from his racing days and lots of stories. They look at all this stuff on the walls and them hoods over there. And the 11 Jack right there, sitting right there. It takes a man to pick it up, but if you'll notice, he got it with two hands and slung it around and knocked the legs out from underneath that NASCAR fish. <laughs> right off his feet. You'll leave Junior Johnson's breakfast with a full stomach for sure, and possibly a fuller appreciation for one of North Carolina's best known sports figures. Is this the greatest thing that ever happened to me? Thank you. Junior's a full-fledged Hall of Famer now, inducted into NASCAR's shrine in May. But through his decades of pole positions, cup championships, and other accolades, Junior Johnson has remained accessible. I mean, you just don't realize how good a person he is until you're around him. You get around him so much, you get used to Junior, you know. You don't get used to the, the legend and all that, you know. You, you're used to Junior because he's just an average person. An average person who's happy to have you over for breakfast at 7 a.m. Just call ahead if you can.